Okay, hi everyone. So today I'm going to explain about the convergence study. Okay, validations, post-processing procedures. Okay, so first we are going to talk about the convergence study. So here I have an example simulations for a wall panel. So you can see that experimental data is 583 kilonewtons for the ultimate loop. And then we here have uh, various size from the abacus mesh study, which is GB 150 to GB 13. Higher the number of GB, the coarser mesh, and then lower the number of GB is the finer mesh. So you, you can record also the total elements from the uh, simulations, which is next slide, I will show you how to record the total elements. And then the PU here, okay, this is also record from the uh, simulations. So you will get the percentage different from the experiments okay with the simulations so how you get this is the experimental data minus the gb uh, the uh, final element result and then over the experimental data then you will get the percentage so once you get this result then you plot the graph so you can see that this is the trend of the graph okay so from the coarser mesh to the more fine mesh you will get here is almost flake data. So this is what we call the convergence study, which is using the mesh density. So we start with 1000, about 1000. Okay, for this is a very uh, big scale panel. So you start from 1000. If uh, just a very small size panel, you can start from 100, 200 is up to you. Okay, so from 1000, every time we increase by double it. So this is about 1,000 to 2,000, 2,000 to 4,000, 4,000 to about uh, uh, 10,000, and then 10,000 to 20, and then you increase like that. Okay, so you record the ultimate load and then you plot the graph. So this is a trend of this. Another trend is also sometimes it will be like this. So either this or this, okay, the shape. So after you get this data, the purpose of convergence study is when you want to run the model after that onwards, you no need to do so many mesh size. And then we know that all, not all mesh size will give you the accurate data. It means that after you simulate the panels, you can proceed with GB15 or GB14. Okay, so if your panel, panel becomes uh, bigger in size, so you need to use the smaller GB number. The means more fine size because you increase the size. But then this is one thing is if you use the GB for this panel, okay, this example, you don't need to use like GB5, GB4 because once you use the GB15, it already give you the accurate data. You don't need to waste, waste the computational times, okay? Next slide. So this is how you're going to get the total elements when you do the simulations. When you come uh, do the mesh size, you can check the mesh size is you go to tools, okay, tools, then you go to the query. So from query, you can find the mesh, which is here, okay? So from the mesh, you can see that you will provide you this data, which is highlighted here, okay? So you can see that the number two is total number of elements. You recorded this number, okay? So this is a total elements, and then it also gives you the types of the elements with this C3DLR. In another separate video, I will show you, I will explain to you what is the element types of this. Okay, so you need to remember you use tools and then you go to query and then you go to mesh, then you can get the answer. Okay, so another one is validations. Once you complete the convergence study, it means you get the accurate answer. Okay, so you will compare the experimental data and also the final element data, which is the PUFEA minus PUX experiment over PU experiment times 100%, means you get around 14.58 here and then 3.78 here. So normally for a panels, and for the validation, sorry, for the validation, you need to uh, validate around 0, 0.0 to 10 percent, or the highest value is 0 to 15 percent difference allowed only. So if you get more accurate answer, mean you will get uh, better results. Okay. And other than that, you need to also validate the failure mode. So you can see that this is the experimental failure mode, which is the panel fail at the middle. So for your panels, okay, for your result in the final element simulations, for this is the damage is due to the compression, the fracture. 
So it also fail at the same spot. Means that now you already validate the PU loading, the ultimate loading, and also the failure modes. Uh, so other than that, you can plot. You need to plot the displacement, uh, uh, which is the vertical displacement and horizontal displacement of the experimental result versus the final element result, and then you need to see the trends. So the closer the graph together, okay. The, for that two data means the higher accurate you, higher accuracy you get. However, sometimes the for the final element you tends to get more stiff result mean, which is because in final elements there is no errors means everything is in perfect conditions. But then in experiment you will always has errors okay such as the eccentricity and then the human's error and so on. So it will not like hundred percent the same. Okay, so using these three components, which is the automatic load, the displacement, the displacement, and then the failure mode, then you can validate the data. Okay. So to get all the results like that, you need to have the post processing and data extraction. So how you get the ultimate load, how you get the photos uh, of the fractures, and then you need to use the post processing steps. So first. You need to know how to open the results. So either you open the CAE and then you go to job, okay, which is here. You can find the job here after you complete the jobs. Or either you can directly open the ODB file. You go to the folder of that model and then you can find the ODB file for that result. Then you can directly open the ODB file. But then in the ODB file, you will not see your model. It is just pure result file. So you need to remember what is your model. Okay, so once you open it, you will have this frame. Okay, so you can see that all the results here. This is the bar for you to see the videos, like the step, how it changed, how the fracture happens, how the step increase, uh, how the stress increase. So uh, here you will have the selections to see the stress, uh, the stress, and then the damage, and so on. You can find it here. Okay, so this is all the step here. You can see that you can plot the data. You can have to create a path, and then to get the path and so on so you can also plot the graph so how you can plot the graph for the you need to plot the force versus displacement for here you will use times one time one point e6 so this data is depends on your result for e6 here it means it's like uh, 1000 kilonewton so here means it's like hey uh, okay you can check the result so one if it, this here is mentioned one time uh, e, e3 means is kilonewton and uh, new kilonewton and e6 is about one thousand kilonewton here okay so you can plot the xy data for the force versus time and then you can plot the xy and then you save it and then you plot the xy data for displacement versus time and then there is a combined function here. You can go through it. I will show you in another videos. And then you can combine the data of force versus displacement graph. Then you can get this graph. Okay. So for the report, how you extract the data? Just now you already plot the graph. Okay. You plot the graph from there and then you want to extract that data. So you want to extract that data. You can see that here. We can extract the data and then you go to the report. So from the report, you can have the report XY data. And then the names here, uh, it will not give you the TXT file. But then you need to save, you can select the folder where you want. And then you go to the name of that file. You can save the file, whatever name you have, but you need to have .txt. Means that the result file will save in the TXT file. And then here you can see that you, your data will include the XY data. But then here normally we will click also this button. Okay, remember to click this. So this is column of min and max. What is this for? So when you click this the for column min and max means it will directly sort out which is the maximum value, which is the maximum displacement and maximum uh, ultimate load. So you no need to go through the data and then you can directly get the results okay so this is how you extract the data and then also you will have many many figures from the uh, post processing you can save the damage you can save the stress due to my uh, 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 force 
and then you can save it so how you save it you can see that here there is a printer icon so from this printer icon you click print here okay you can see that it will come up this window so print the viewpoint okay decoration if variable so this one we will not change it and then if you change the color you can change it but here i just leave it there so you can see that here you can have a file there where you want to save so you can read you can name it here and then select the file you want and then you the format you must save in png png here is the image format and then you click ok then it will save for you okay so that's it for this video so for more about the uh, practice how to do the post processing i will prepare a video based on the abacus simulations to show you more okay thank you